right spot on the left ovary. Looks like a solid tumor. Firing the biopsy needle. She's in VTAC. No pulse. Clear. Oof. This girl has had to deal with uveitis, constrictive pericarditis, cardiac arrest, ovarian tumor, early puberty, and all at the age of six. When I was six, I couldn't deal with tying my own shoelaces. Very excited to be reacting to Act Your Age, an episode requested by our first ever channel member, Joseph Randomness. We're gonna be reacting to all 177 episodes on this channel, and this will be episode 26. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. No time to waste. Daddy, look, I can help. No, that's great, honey. Can you just please leave Daddy alone? <sighs> Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. What is going on in this nursery? One kid has a nosebleed that won't stop and another kid can't breathe suddenly. Being a teacher is tough work. To me, it doesn't seem too clear what Lucy has here. Could be an asthma attack, could be that she accidentally inhaled a toy. As the teacher and dad weren't watching since they were attending to the kid with a nosebleed. Could be a panic attack or a focal seizure. Atypical pneumonia. Could be congenital heart disease that is presenting late, like Eisenmenger syndrome or Tetralogy of Fallot, although usually would present really early. Hopefully we get some clues to narrow it down. Restrictive pericarditis. Get her into surgery. She already is in surgery. Round out the usual suspects. Amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis. Wow, three minutes into the episode and we've already got ghost chili levels of spice. When the sac around the heart becomes too tight, usually because of inflammation and calcium deposition, squeezing the heart and limiting its ability to pump normally. It can cause venous congestion and backflow of blood to the lungs leading to breathlessness. Causes are those that lead to chronic inflammation, such as tuberculosis, viral infection, lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, kidney failure, tumors, and genetic disorders. You can usually find it on ECG because of widespread ST changes. Treatment depends on the cause, but can be anti-inflammatories or steroids if it's not infectious. And if it is, then antibiotics are helpful. If fluid is there, then it can be taken off to help relieve the pressure on the heart and also be sent to the lab for diagnostics. I remember once when we were doing cardiac surgery on a 36 year old guy who came in with a heart attack and we opened up his chest and we saw how inflamed the sac around his heart was, the pericardium, and had to close the chest immediately because there was no way we were gonna do a bypass operation with his pericardium that inflamed. Here's a question for you smart people though. What vein do we use for a coronary artery bypass graft? Bonus points if you can tell me what artery we use as well. Pathology report just got filed. I found granulomas in Lucy's pericardium. In case of fungal infection. Nice work. He went home. Work smart, not hard. Find out which fungus, biopsy a lymph node. Well, so Chase wanted things to get more serious with Cameron after their fling, but Cameron wasn't into it. So there's some serious tension in the team here. What's even more interesting is that they found granulomas in the pericardium. So what on earth are they and what causes them? So granulomatous inflammation is chronic inflammation characterized by of immune cells called macrophages. They basically eat certain pathogens and classically TB and sarcoidosis are what trigger them, but more rarely it can be things like leprosy, cryptococcosis, histoplasmosis, schistosomiasis, ascariasis. Other rarer causes can be drugs like sulfonamides, allopurinol, phenylbutazone, or chemicals like beryllium, which is very toxic and can be found in mineral rocks, soil, coal, oil, and volcanic dust. Crohn's granulomatosis with polyangiitis and a giant cell arthritis are also other causes of granuloma. You can test for much of these through blood tests, but of course, why would you do that when you could just stick another needle in your kindergarten patient? Silly me. Yeah, now it's one to take. Lit lamp revealed the eye's anterior chamber is swollen. Uveitis means it's not a post-op effect and it's not neurological. It's not fungal either. Lymph node biopsy was clean. 
So, okay, so we have a new symptom, double vision. Also found that the mother unfortunately passed away recently because of a brain tumor. Uveitis is classically associated with rheumatological conditions and with pericarditis. I would be thinking things like lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, relapsing polychondritis, and Kogan's syndrome. TB and sarcoidosis are still very much in the race. I would want a quantiferon to check for TB or a Manto test to screen. Don't want to give steroids if it is TB because it will get worse. Could also be Langerhan cell histiocytosis as well, but very, young, very, very rare. Stroke was caused by a clot in her middle cerebral artery. This poor girl is not having a good day. Clearly, she has multiple systems affected all at the same time and it is rapidly progressive. One thing they should definitely be checking after a stroke is an echo of the heart. That's to see if there's any infection there, especially after she had heart surgery. Infectious endocarditis can lead to clots like this in an unexpected way. You may also find Osler's nodes, Janeway lesions, or splinter hemorrhages if you look at their hands, if that was the case. It looks like House had started steroids and that made her worse, which means infection becomes much more likely. So I'm sure they'll be testing for TB around about now. Arthritis, heart disease. Why can't this kid act her age? She's fully hydrated and her blood's still thicker than pancake batter. You two go check the house, see if dad's a closet Marlboro man. Start her in hydroxyurea to control her red blood cell production. House just said a very misplaced statement here. Why can't this kid act her age? Episode is also called Act Your Age, which makes me think the underlying condition could be one that accelerates aging. So far, she has polycythemia, which is too much hemoglobin, uveitis, pericarditis, and stroke. In reality, these aren't all age-related conditions, but let's go with it for now. Progeria or Hutchinson-Guilford syndrome can cause accelerated aging from the second year of life. It's also known as Benjamin Button syndrome. I feel like that would fit perfectly here. It's a mutation in the lamin A gene, which is a protein that holds the cell's nucleus together and so makes the cells unstable. It can cause severe and progressive cardiovascular conditions, hardening of the arteries, insulin resistance, and joint stiffness. There's no known therapy at present, but this is house, so I'm sure they'll find an experimental cure if it were that. Speaking of aging, the Hall of Fame only has four spots left to etch your name into the channel history forever. You can secure a place by becoming a member. When we hit 10 members, we'll be doing a members live stream and Q&A. And as a member, you get access to other perks like being able to suggest content for me to react to and early access to videos. The earlier you join, the earlier I can react to your suggestions. So press join to secure your spot now. She's being abused. Full physical exam. Look for bruises we may have missed. Check her mouth and do a vaginal exam. Okay, this is very interesting. So there's no way this girl is actually being abused. And I'm sure that we'll find the actual explanation for this. Maybe the brother was in the room and wiped his bloody nose on her shirt and felt embarrassed. He'd ruined his sister's clothes, so he put it in the vent. The brother seems to be the key in this case, and there's a theme here of tr him trying to act older than his age as well by flirting with Cameron, even though he's under 10. For the patient, it could still be progeria, and another option is hemochromatosis. I know overload can cause nosebleeds, thick blood requiring venesection, and pericarditis in rare cases. So let's see anyways what the result of this exam is. She has cuts all over her genital area, like slices. Some are almost healed, but some are new. So we have no explanation for the cuts or the blood. It's menstrual blood. She started puberty. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So she started puberty early, and that's what's caused on the, the blood on the shirt. Now this patient is six, and puberty that starts before eight, age eight is called precocious puberty. Keep in mind that menarche and onset of period is usually at the end of puberty. The usual average age is 13 years old, so she's had it seven years before that, very early. 
To understand why this could happen, we need to understand what actually triggers puberty. There is a hormonal axis that starts in the hypothalamus with a hormone called GnRH, which triggers the release of LH and FSH from the pituitary gland. That causes release of estrogen and progestogens from the ovary, which kickstarts the monthly cycle. So when puberty starts before age eight in girls and age nine in boys, there could be a central or a peripheral cause. Central causes could be tumor releasing the GnRH hormone or HCG, an infection or cyst or radiation damage to the brain. Sometimes there's no reason found as well. Peripheral problems could be ovarian cyst or a tumor, genetic conditions like McCune Albright syndrome, gland dysfunction due to uh, thyroid or adrenal dysfunction or external medication or creams. Treatment depends on the cause, so she needs some investigation, including hormone levels and a head scan, especially since her mother died of brain cancer recently. It could still be progeria though. I won't let that go. Come on, Benjamin Button syndrome. How good is that? She started growing pubic hair. She snuck daddy's razor and tried to shave it off. If the tumor is not in her brain, it's in her reproductive tract. Get an MRI. Okay, so House is going along with my line of reason here. I wouldn't be surprised if she has a tumor, but if she does, it's probably a pituitary adenoma, ovarian cancer, cyst, genital adrenal hyperplasia would be my bet. Give me the scans though. What did people even do before scans? They would just have to guess and operate with no antiseptic. We've come a long way, people. And yet only 10% say the world is getting better. Interesting dichotomy. There's a bright spot on the left ovary. Looks like a solid tumor. <gasps> Firing the biopsy needle. She's in VTAC. Impulse. Clear. Ooh, this girl has had to deal with uveitis, constrictive pericarditis, cardiac arrest, ovarian tumor, early puberty, and all at the age of six. When I was six, I couldn't deal with tying my own shoelaces. Since she's had a cardiac arrest, in this scenario as a doctor, we would be thinking about the four H's and T's, which are the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. For her, the most likely is probably tamponade because she's just had an operation on her pericardium. So here's another question for you smart people. What are the other H's and T's for? Answers down below. Arrhythmia must have been a reaction to the hydroxyurea. Resect the tumor, hormone levels go back to normal, her symptoms go away. Big plan. Except for the fact that her tumor is not a tumor. It's a benign cyst. So earlier, Cameron was talking about how the source of hormones could be exogenous or environmental, and House dismissed it as a waste of time. Now it seems like Cameron was right. So what in the environment could be triggering this? There was a case I read that was published in 2007 of an almost five-year-old girl who went into early puberty that was triggered by overconsumption of soy, which acted as an endocrine disruptor. Could that be the case here? Don't touch her! Ah! Oh! Figure out what's killing the girl. Her brother's got it too. Jasper's got a hundred times more testosterone than a healthy eight-year-old. Okay, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. It explains everything in both of them. Genetic disorder causes deficiency of corticosteroids, which leads to more sex hormone, precocious puberty, excessive testosterone release, can be high calcium, which can cause the pericarditis, could test for it with genetics, or measuring hormones in the blood or urine. Treatment includes giving steroid medication that they're deficient of. Let's see. My tummy hurts. Stomach pain is from a cyst in her pancreas. Found two more in her kidneys and one in her lung. Was he just pointing at the lung? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but that there, my friend, is the transverse colon. No fresh air in there. I also just noticed that her name is Lucy Tyson. Her brother is a Tyson too. What is it with Tysons having too much testosterone? Now, lots of cysts, including renal, could be von Hippel-Lindau or TB still, or any other of the things that I've mentioned. They need to do other hormone tests to figure this one out. It's genetic, it's not environmental. Gotta be a pituitary adenoma. You should remove her pituitary gland. She needs brain surgery. 
I just need to know how often you go to their house and what you bring. Okay, things are getting very spicy now. Cameron wants to cut the girl's pituitary gland out, even though they've scanned it and it's normal. How still thinks it's environmental, and I tend to agree. Now, now, now. Turns out the dad has been dating the nursery lady. And I wonder if the girl has got hands on her birth control, could explain why the girl had a precocious puberty, wouldn't explain the sun symptoms though as taking estrogen tablets tends to lower, not increase testosterone, unless he managed to get his hands on anabolic steroids, especially since he was getting into lots of fights at school, maybe he wanted to bulk up to prepare, interesting. Antibiotics can also cause nosebleeds, which the sun started with. Maybe that's it? Lip wax? Excess facial hair in women. It's a clear sign of hormonal imbalance. Hey, use a male enhancement cream to keep up with her. What does this have to do with penis pumper loaded with testosterone? Male enhancement cream. That, that essentially causes short-term enlargement and stronger erections in men by topically applying testosterone to the penis area. There must have been contamination somewhere uh, where the kids got a hold of it, even though he said he only uses it at the gym, which is curious, really. As we're finding out, fun is dangerous. 90% of our waste is excreted through our skin. Time you gave the little tykes a hug, you gave him a dose of testosterone. It, if I stop using it? You'll be floppy, you'll be fine. Oh, male enhancement cream and not Benjamin Button syndrome. Well done, house. I think I went a little mad on the differentials here. There was definitely a romantic element to this episode with house messing with Wilson and sending him flowers as if they were from Cuddy. <laughs> then house asking Cuddy out himself and Cameron saying that she doesn't want a relationship with Chase. Very interesting diagnosis as well here. If I'm trying this hard, surely I'm gonna get it in the next one. What do you think? Find out here. Stay curious.